Life in Britain a hundred years ago was quite different to life as it is today. For a start, people were called the Edwardians. This is because at the beginning of the 20th century, King Edward VII was on the throne. He had inherited an impressive global empire, which children in schools up and down the country saw daubed in red on a global map. It spanned so much of the globe it was called the empire upon which the sun never set because it was always daytime somewhere. This was an exciting time to be British. The new monarchy brought with it a confidence and new fashions for men and women. Speaking of women, many were fighting for the right to vote with the suffragette movement. This confidence saw people not only protesting, but also people enjoying leisure time more than ever. For example, going as a family on a trip to the beach, a holiday, the Edwardians knew how to have fun. This was also an age of new exciting inventions. For example, imagine seeing a motor car on your street for the first time. Flight was becoming more and more a possibility, with newspapers offering big cash prizes for long-distance flights. And also international travel, voyages on ships like the Titanic, were becoming increasingly common. Not only were people travelling the world, but the world was getting smaller. Telephones were becoming increasingly common, meaning that people could have long-distance conversations for the first time. And of course the Edwardians knew how to shop. This is Central Arcade in Newcastle upon Tyne, an impressive space. But I know what you're wondering, what would life have been like for me, a child, a hundred years ago? Well, let's start by looking at fashion and clothes. Formal clothing was far more common amongst the Edwardians. Indeed, sometimes boys and girls dressed very similarly. Also, how people dressed was far more dependent on how much money they had. So poor people dressed, well, like poor people. Then again, I'd much rather dress like that than have to wear this particular sailor's costume. Hmm. Okay, what did children do to stave off boredom, I hear you cry? Well, children played games. A popular game, for example, was running a hoop through the streets with a stick. It's far more difficult than it looks. Marbles were extremely popular. People would play competitively for marbles. Winner takes all. Here's a marble game underway. Notice the ring on the floor, the marbles being flicked in from the outside. Of course, hopscotch was a popular game, though coloured chalk wasn't very common. Probably white chalk or a stone was used to scratch on the floor. These children are playing with spinning tops, a pointed bit of wood which you wrap string around and then make spin by quickly yanking the string away. Conkers and conker battles were a popular pastime. The conker season was always a busy season for Edwardian children. Of course, dolls were popular. This doll has been handmade and may well have found itself invited to a tea party. Edwardian children loved pretending to have tea parties. Now worry not, if tea parties aren't your thing, perhaps these wooden football men might be. You roll the ball down their legs to try and score a goal. And of course, board games were very popular. Here is a copy of Snakes and Ladders. What all of this means is that Edwardian children needed to have good imaginations and to be able to play well with one another. Now it's time to think about school, starting with the teacher's desk. Teachers rarely walked around their classrooms. They spoke while sitting at a high desk at the front of the class. Edwardian teachers were known for being firm but fair. Treat them well and they would respect you. Get on their wrong side and you may well get the cane. Edwardian children did not write on paper. Usually, they practiced their handwriting on a chalkboard. Only their best work would be committed to paper, writing with a pencil or a fountain pen and all of this would be kept neatly inside the desk. One major difference in an Edwardian classroom is that it would be heated by an open fire in the corner of the room. Outside the classroom, the Edwardians loved gym and sports, though I reckon those gym kits look a little bit awkward to climb up a ladder in. 
One more thing worth mentioning, though, is that children had more access than ever to chocolate. So school may have been tough, but at least you could get a chocolate bar. Of course, the First World War changed a great many things for everyone, adults and children alike. Children will have immediately noticed the effect it had on their loved ones. Fathers, brothers, uncles, many of them went off to war. At home, children will have noticed soldiers beginning to train. Training camps and training trenches opened up all over the country. Some of these sites would have been quite bizarre. Here are some soldiers learning to shoot while wearing gas masks. The First World War was the first total war, meaning that civilians could also be targeted. This is an airship called a Zeppelin. These were responsible for air raids, dropping bombs on places like the northeast of England. In towns like Whitley Bay and Wall's End, some houses were bombed during the First World War. This will have had a dramatic effect on children living in the area. It is likely that no one in Britain was unaffected by the First World War. But children were then, as they are now, resilient. They accepted changes to their daily lives. They continued to play games and have adventures, but they also contributed to the war effort where they could. Here, for example, the Whitley Bay Scouts took on coast guarding duties under the orders of the Admiralty. Bang, all your troubles in your own, keep bang and bang.